So, Doug, uh, we brought you on. Uh, I met you, I think, yesterday or yeah. the day before, and you had the Sweetwater Trolling T-shirt on. I'm like, what do you know about those guys? And you're like, uh, I started it. Yep, yep. That was my thing. Um, I started Sweetwater Trolling a couple of years ago. It was mostly just, you know, getting into the salmon tackle, fishing, and looking for new stuff. And I started following more and more tackle makers all over the United States. And I kind of... that turned into me starting a website and I report on if they have new products, sales, giveaways, things cool. like that. It's all in one place. It's all automatically reported through Facebook to my website and it's information that's available. So sweet. For you know, one of the more popular uh, emails that goes out is uh, it's called Target Walleye. Mm -hmm. and they send this email out of basically what's going on in the industry around walleyes. And what you've done essentially is built a Facebook page that Kind of does that, but around the trolling world. Yeah, and also with the website, if you don't like, you know, there's a lot of people who don't like Facebook. It's not the most popular, you know. It's out there on the website as well. Sure. So there's multiple places you can get that information. And this is something that, that you do, like, manually. You're, you're, you're actually in, in the dirt doing this. Yes, I do. Like I said, every morning I'm getting up before I start work, and I go through this routine, and it doesn't take me all that long, but... You know, it's a lot of fun. I've met a lot of really cool people this way. You know, I have guys throwing me tackle to do giveaways. You know, sometimes they're just sending me tackle for for thank you. Yeah. Sure. Um, so and it's been it's really cool. awesome. So I had some great opportunities already. Who are, who are some of your favorite companies to check out? Uh, some of my favorites, uh, Hypervis Tapes out west. They've got a really great product. I've been actually playing, it around, playing around with it a little bit myself. Um, that stuff's really phenomenal. The sparkle, that's that tape, you know, when you start lighting it up with the laser, it's shooting stuff all over the place. Yeah, that, that really attracts the fish. I mean, right there, I mean, so that's a brand that I don't even know, right? So now you, I mean, so there you go. I mean, so this is, I do this every day, right? I don't and know still, about this brand. And I still don't know. And so, I mean, that's so why. so many out yeah, there, right? right? So some of the others that I've done with is Brown Dog Fishing, again, another West Coast company. And they do three pin 3D printed lures, including they do a little two inch uh, Firefly uh, J plug. And they also have this interesting, what they call a wounded minnow. And it's, it's a semi-curved strip of 3D printed plastic that swims upside down. And it just looks phenomenal in the water. And we've done a giveaway with them. Does it cool. catch fish? It does catch fish. It catches a lot of fish, <laughs> yeah. actually. Uh, triple Threat Lures up in Canada. Um, really had a phenomenal giveaway with them. They were really great to work with. So, you know, there's some of the... It, you know, it, do you find a lot of it is cottage brands, you know, kind of, you know, startup companies? or yes. I mean, is that is that what you're finding a lot of? Yeah, it, really, I try to... You know, I'm really there to try and help those those small Get getting attention. started. Yeah. It, you know, and what surprised me for no more than what I do, which is basically I just reshare what they posted, sure. make a little comment. Yeah. And they're telling me all the time. It's like, thank you so much. This has helped me sell. That's great. Right. And they really appreciate the extra yeah. share and the extra effort that I give them. So. Yeah. And we do too. And that's how I knew who you were because just about every morning I go online and sweet water trolling totally. shared, shared your post. Well, and I appreciate it. You know, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's been a lot of fun. So some of the, those are kind of three three of the brands that, that you've discovered and some of your favorite brands that you've worked with. Um, tell us about maybe some of the bigger brands that you see because obviously you're doing a lot of work out there. You're looking at social media. Who are some of the brands that you think are just – Killing it on social media, doing a good job there. Um, Triple Threat Lures, who I mentioned, you know, they're really, you know, they really have a good game going. They've stepped up their game in terms of new products. You know, they definitely have some fantastic spoons out there. The other thing is, is they've just started doing meat rigs and flashers, and, and with they use the Hypervis tapes. Mm -hmm. So really, really good looking product out there. Um, trying to think who else off the hook. Yeah, now you got me on the spot. I'm getting a little nervous. That's and... what we do here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, who else? You know, and I've even been interacting some with Gibbs Tackle, you know, <laughs> and what they do. And they have a really been doing a really nice series on, you know, having the pro staffer share, you know, what their favorites are from Gibbs Delta. And, you know, and these are all great things to help boost that following for the vendors, you know, whether it's, you know, sharing their pros, telling their, them about the pro staffers, sharing what orders they get and taking pictures of that, sharing that on our Facebook page. 
all that stuff goes out through me too. And people see that and then go, oh, well, that's something I'd like to order, you know, stuff like that. So it's been very interesting from that perspective too. So you're sharing this stuff on the Facebook page. It goes on your website, but you've got actual categories on the website of the different categories. Tell me a little bit yeah, about so the categories. That it's not organized as best as I would like, but, um, you know, I all these companies, when I follow them, I create a big page on my website. And I go through and I try to categorize the lures that they have. Sometimes they're hard to classify, but, you know, out there, if you want to say you want to look at uh, companies that make uh, rod holders, all you got to do is go to my my vendor page and select companies that make rod holders. And you're going to see 20, 30 companies out there that, sure. that do that from, you know, all over the country. So you, you've got categories like giveaways and things like that too. So people some, looking for that. Yep, that as well. Um, there's definitely, um, you know, kind of the daily stuff that gets reported would be just the general daily news. There's a, a dedicated page for new products. There's a dedicated page for sales and giveaways, things like that. So, so you Sweetwater Trolling on Facebook. What's the website? The website is just www.sweetwatertrolling.com. Simple and easy. Where are you based from? I'm based out of Niles, Michigan, and I fish out of St. Joe, Michigan a lot. So, Pretty cool. So how'd you end up here? We're, we're a little ways away from there. You are. Well, I'm good friends. With, I'm a pro staffer for GRC Trolling Flies, so I've been with them for a couple of years now. Love his product. Fantastic flies, fantastic meat rigs and stuff like that. So I've been trying to come out here for a couple of years now. COVID got in the way. I finally managed to make it work last minute, so that's how I ended up out here. Nice. So this is the first time at this show? First time with this show, yeah. So what do you think? I like it. I like it. It's a lot of fun. Met a lot of great people here. Uh, Chinook Diver folks down there, some of the nicest people you ever meet. I mean, really, really enjoyed it. So you've got your finger on the pulse of everything that's going on social media-wise. You ended up in this room, and there's a lot of stuff. Were there any companies that you saw this weekend that you didn't know about? Uh, yeah, 3L Flies, I think the name of it, was one of them that I hadn't heard of. Okay. Um, I think that's the one that surprised me. Like, like I, you know, I'm on the, on the interwebs all the time, so I, I catch a lot of them. A lot of guys try to help me out, and they're saying, do you have this one? Yeah, I already know about them. Yeah, yeah you know, right. so, um, but yeah, that's definitely one of the new ones. They were down there tying a Logan, uh, about my son's age, so 14, 15, was down there tying peanut flies, okay. you know, right in front of people, which was I thought was awesome. Yeah. So you're fishing out of St. Joe's. You just told me you've got a son. Yeah. Uh, what's it? What's your fishing look like? So I am pretty much in the on the water every weekend from mid March through September, maybe even into October, depending on weather conditions and what I have, what the condition of my boat is after a full season of fishing. Yeah. So I, I run a lot of. Sit do a lot of trout and salmon fishing out of St. Joe. Occasionally, we'll do uh, some river fishing as well. So, you're not a charter captain? No. Just a, a recreational? Just animal. do it for fun. What are you running for a boat? I have a used craft Ocean Pro 220. Okay, that's really so cool. Boat. It's a fantastic boat. Love that boat. Tell me tell me how that sets up. How do you get your boat set up? So, I've got the boat set up. I've got, uh, I've got Scotty Downriggers on either side. Or, yes. Yeah. Got it. Sorry, I've switched down riggers so many times, confusing myself. <laughs> so right now I'm running a, a Scotty, the, the high powered ones, the with so that I can run the heavy weights because we fish deep. You know, we're out there fishing 250, 300 foot of water quite a, quite a bit. I've got um, two Ray Marine displays, Axiom nines, one at the front of the boat, one at the back, so I can see what's going on. And then I'm running a Fishhawk X4 um, for my speed, temp, and depth. Um, yeah, and I'm typically running 12 rods, 10 to 12 rods. How, how do you get them set up? You got your, your two downriggers. So I got two downriggers, two dipsies, and then, you know, depending on conditions, I'll be running, you know, you know, depending on the time of the year, I'm running either lead core or copper. I haven't done weighted steel yet. That's the one thing I haven't tried yet. So I'm thinking, curious about that. And hopefully we'll pull the trigger on that soon. Yeah, that, that's, I think that, I think my next trolling boat is going to be that direction and yeah so you know we're on you know our home water is lake superior and man, okay for a trailerable boat it's that's pretty but tough you, to beat that setup like you've got i tell you what that boat is tough as nails yeah i mean you're gonna break 
you're going to break yourself before you break the boat. And I've been out there in some pretty gnarly conditions. We've been out there. When I test drove it, we were out in 8 to 16s. And uh, Yeah, no thanks. No, it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't fun. But <laughs> I have to, to say, that. I felt safer in that boat than my old uh, Tracker Pro Guide. Yeah, well, yeah, and that, the three-footers. That, you yeah, know? That, I could, it I was can a believe totally that. different yeah. world. Yeah. So, yeah. fantastic boat. And lots of options for rigging and setting up too. Yeah, I think you're just going to continue to see more and more of those hauls in the. Absolutely, in the they've become. Yeah. It's amazing how popular they become, yeah. Yeah. and they're really solid boats. Yeah. You know, it's one of those boats though. I think that you know, people look at it and go, "Well, that's a Western boat," but you yeah, know, as it becomes more and more popular, I think I think as you experience them, yeah. and, you know, as more and more guys have them, and and you know, it's just a kind of a word of mouth yeah. thing and you know you get somebody that's on the dock with you and hey let's go for a ride and whatever i th think as you experience them it just makes a lot of sense and and you know <clears throat> i can tell you firsthand we put a lot more product now on you know 18 to 20 foot trailer boats than we do on a on a charter oh, yeah. boat or yep. a big glass boat or something like that because you know that's uh boats aren't cheap as, as we all know no, no, they're not. I, I mean this is a these are major investments and and uh you know that style of boat just has a lot of value over a, over a long period yeah. of time and the thing is with that boat other than repowering, you know, yeah. that boat's going right. to last for my son and maybe I his son, I don't even think know? Captain Krabby could mess that boat. I mean, you want to eat Cheetos? Great. Eat Cheetos. I don't care. Yeah, you know? we'll rinse it out. Yeah, we'll rinse it out. So. And the other, you know, the fun thing is, is if you follow the Hughescraft folks out west, they're putting quads on top oh, of those yeah. things. No, they, you know, they, they got four, they go. two quads and a moose in the boat. Yeah, and they're exactly. They're hauling stuff out of the yeah. bush with that. You're going, yeah. Yeah, how be. would you do that? Yeah, right. <laughs> so... A lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, well, when you're fishing in the, those kind of environments, like yeah. it has to do a lot of different it has to be yeah. bulletproof, yeah. and it is so. What? Super cool. Um, when when did you start? You, you might ask this question. When, when did you start sweetwater trolling? When when did you really kind of get going with it? So sweetwater trolling's been about two and a half years now. Two and a half years. Yep. I mean, in that, I mean, social media changes fast. I it mean, does. what what are the? I mean, what are the changes that you've noticed just in that two and a half year span? So. You definitely are seeing a shift towards people understanding the value of social media more mm -hmm. and, the, and the value of being able to push and sell product through it, right? Mm -hmm. so, so like, you know, the companies that, it's, it's rather interesting. You got the companies that don't really understand it, so you don't see a lot of activity on social media. Mm -hmm. But the guys who do start to get it and can post regularly, right? Like, even if it's just two or three posts a week, so even if it's just, oh, customer X did this order. Here's a picture of the order. Yeah. You know, that makes a difference in terms of you got to have that activity to drive customers to your, your website. You know, just that makes a huge difference. So, you know, there's a lot more of that. I'm really excited about some of the 3D technology that's coming out and, and seeing some of the stuff they're doing with printing lures and printing, you know, there's uh, what is it? A3D Outdoors. They do 3D printed like light boxes that go on your track system and, and 3D printed uh, tool holders that go in your track systems. You know, those are things that are nice and relatively inexpensive for somebody who's starting out versus, you know, you know, track tech, tracks tech and all those guys, they're great, but it's not a budget friendly thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the budget, these these A3D outdoors have an option for you that's relatively cost effective too. It's something that, you know, a guy can or gal can start that type of business in their basement pretty inexpensively. Exactly. Look at the Trax Tech. To be able to make machined aluminum stuff like that's that. Yeah, a major capital. Yeah, 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 major capital investment. You know, mm -hmm. and going back to like um, <clears throat> Brown Dog Fishing, they can tweak that lure over and over again with almost no cost. Right. right? Sure. They go out, they test it don't like how it's performing they come back in they redesign it slightly and they print a new one out and they're excited. like this is a really exciting part of the of the industry that is going to get a lot bigger as this go on that's yeah. interesting really interesting and seeing seeing those kind of products you know that get developed in someone's garage in oregon mm -hmm. and then you're putting it out on your social channel in michigan and somebody from new york sees it and says i want to order that yep. that's pretty cool and it's we hear that a lot with the captains we bring onto the podcast and that you know maybe three years ago when we started this and you kind of had to talk those guys into coming on to the show and now they're like hey can i be on the show because <laughs> the last time i was on the show i booked five trips yeah so like once they start putting these well, things together, yeah. like it becomes very different. I'm here to tell you, Chris Larson has fanboys now. Yeah, <laughs> even a few fan girls. So I've seen it firsthand here, where 
where we've had just a great response from people and and you know you know that appreciate the content and and they're like wow that's chris larson well yeah. it's funny you mention that because you interviewed sergio ferrera yesterday yeah and he was commenting that he was getting people oh, we saw you this is awesome <laughs> Uh, yesterday, maybe the day before, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I'm I don't know how old he was. I'm guessing he's in his 80s, early mm-hmm. 80s. And uh, you know, he you know came and and thanked us for producing the podcast. And you know, three years ago, that guy didn't know what a podcast Even was. Was yeah, right. I mean, that's... so that I mean, that to me is is pretty cool that you've got somebody that's in their 80s that's that's embracing you know new technology, new media. I mean. That's that's pretty darn cool. So so that's also an interesting thing because the technology is finally getting to a point where the point of entry and is a lot Everybody easier. can do it, yeah. You know, yeah. it's amazing how easy it is to set up a website and storefront mm-hmm. with relatively little knowledge. It's not yeah. easy, but, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot yeah. of money, yeah. right? There are times where that's... There's just no way you could even do that. Mm-hmm. But now you can. It's all point and click. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's really yeah. cool how that stuff's coming along. And even doing this stuff, uh, the next guest we'll have coming on, you know, they started their own podcast just recently. Yeah. And, and uh, she was telling me, hey, you know, we're just using these Blue Yeti microphones. They're really inexpensive. Mm-hmm. You plug right into your laptop and you just start talking. And they're like, we're just like amazed that this is this works and it's like, yeah yeah you know and it works good <laughs> yeah it does right yeah. it's it's and yeah. it's simple yeah. you know yeah. it doesn't take a whole lot and like you know the other side of that is like the video editing options that are out there right. are relatively inexpensive now and and simple to use mm-hmm. you know i play around with it too I, I think i mean i i personally think it's going to be you know this is the tip of the iceberg right because totally. my my kids your kids your kids they're doing this stuff for fun. You know, we, we, we got involved with this for a different, you know, we, for, you know, different motives, yeah. right? Now these are kids that have, that have grown up with it, that they do it just because they can. Yeah. I mean, what are they going to produce? I mean, yep. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be, I know what your daughter produces, which is a pretty cool stuff, you know, mostly at his expense, but, uh, she makes fun of me on YouTube and gets 9 million views. Doing it. <laughs> literally. literally awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My son will do that too. Yeah. He, he doesn't have that many followers though, but you know, the other, the other thing that I think we're going to see a big jump in really, really soon. And Canon's kind of got the, the market on that right now which is the integration between all these systems right so so i think that's just going to get better and better and, and really be huge in in the coming coming several years yeah just to see the growth and all this stuff and, yep and just how fast it spreads too. you know you start you start talking and things look exactly you know you're kind of the gasoline on this and that you know, we put something out, and then you see it, and then you put it out, and then maybe someone else says, oh, that's cool, and then they share it, and all yep. of a sudden, it's all over. Yeah, and it's amazing how quick it spreads, you know. you, you yeah. know, All of a sudden, you got guys talking to you up in the middle of nowhere in British Columbia, and you're going, yeah. how did you even find me? You know, yeah, it's, right. it's amazing. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it's very cool. Uh, is there anything else, Doug, that you want to talk about before we let you go here? We're no, I, this is awesome. I thank you very much for having me on. It's really, really been fun. Well, thanks for doing what you do. I mean, not only it, it helps us, and it's exciting for me every morning to wake up and see that our stuff got shared, but you're helping the entire industry, too. Yeah. And you're helping the people that are out there fishing learn about what's going on out there as well. Yeah, very cool, and thank you again very much. Yeah, so appreciate you're helping it. grow the sport. So, yep. So we appreciate you. So well, man. Cool. Thanks. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. You bet.